Okay, welcome back to the next stages or next steps of uh, OFM Swift TR 260 build. Now that you have seen, uh, the building of the frame was pretty easy, setting up of uh, DRT dynamic rotor tilting was very easy. Uh, motors were installed pretty easy. Of course, all you have to do is four screws, okay? And uh, after installing the motors, the next thing I did was to go down to my little workshop and uh, do the soldering, okay? So as you can see here how I have uh, done all the soldering here, I have connected uh, XT60, then all the ESCs are connected, UBC is here, and I have also attached uh, red and black for uh, an additional uh, connector that I'm gonna use to power uh, anything else like FPV systems. Uh, now make sure that red goes to positive, black goes to negative. Don't make mistake or as soon as you connect the power, you're gonna see some magical smoke. Okay, so now next thing that you're gonna do is uh, very simple. For now, uh, we are not, for now we are not concerned about how and which way the motor will spin. We will do it on the next step which is coming very very soon. For now, you just connect all three cables of these ESCs to any of the three cables from the motor, okay? No matter what order, just connect them, okay? Don't worry about the ordering of these cables. Okay, after connected, well, now let me show you the layout of the motor's spinning direction according to CC3D, okay? This is your motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four. All right, uh, if camera is looking from that direction, we have to reverse it this way, all right? So you can see motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four, okay? Now, how these motors will spin, let me simply draw a diagram. Okay, so motor number one is going to spin this way, so that is clockwise. Motor number two is going to spin anti-clockwise. Motor number three will follow the motor number one and spin clockwise. Motor number four will follow motor number two and spin anti-clockwise. So I hope this is clear. Now, in order to make these motors spin in the right direction, you will have to power the uh, power distribution board, uh, power up the ESCs, and using your radio and receiver, you will uh, throttle calibrate the ESCs right away, and you will also see which motor is spinning which, in which direction, and by swapping these cables, we will make motors spin in the right way. So let's first do this step, and then we will look at the beautification or how to put everything inside. Okay, so here I am with my trusted Futaba radio, T10J. Uh, first thing what you're going to do is, of course, if you're familiar with your radio, is going to start a new model, okay? Uh, so I have just started a new model and I have renamed it Swift TR New. Okay, I will show you the screen of radio and its programming at later stages when we are actually doing it. But for now, I just want to show you that um, my my all of my settings are at stock. Okay, whatever the model settings are after resetting the model. Now we are ready to connect everything, and my battery is here. So what I'm gonna do is connect this cable. I have made this cable especially to uh, throttle calibrate four ESCs at once. So this is just a parallel cable, okay? Uh, to connect four ESCs at one time to channel three. 
So if you're using a Futaba, this will go to channel 3. If you're using JR Spectrum, this will go to channel 1. If you're using any other radio, please consult your radio's user manual. Now connect each ESC to one of the cables. I will highly recommend you make the same type of cable. This makes life really easy. Remember one thing that um, right now we are not going to connect the um, servo, so uh, don't worry about the tilting mechanism, okay? Uh, remember one thing, these ESCs don't have uh, UVC, so connect your UVC cable, okay? Here is the UVC right here. Connect it to uh, power your receiver at the same time, okay? Uh, now what we're gonna do is turn on the radio and for the very first time connect the power praying that there is no magical smoke. Okay, no smoke, motor sound really nice. Let's do it once again. This time we will be doing the throttle calibration, okay? For that, go full throttle on your radio, connect two beeps, throttle zero all the beeps okay now the motors uh, now that the ESCs are throttle calibrated now you can check Ooh, sounds like an angry sports car waiting like throttle okay anyway I'm getting excited all right let's see the motors okay according to the diagram that I have shown now I'm putting the diagram once again onto it this motor should spin this way, okay, clockwise. And I see it's spinning wrong, so I will just swap any of the two cables from ESC to motor. Check. Motor spins right. Check. This motor spins wrong. So swap two cables, any of the two cables. This is really easy. Check again. It's right. Now the rear motors. Third motor, this should spin this way. Wrong. Swap the cables. right fourth motor should spin this way wrong swap the cables so swap any of the two cables from ESC the motor will change the spinning direction all right all motors are spinning according to our CC3D layout or according to the quadcopter layout of CC3D now everything is set disconnect the power Turn off your radio, we are going to get to the radio programming later. Now the next step is totally up to you. How you want your Swift TR 260 to look and how you work out uh, tucking everything in in a beautiful or neat way. For me, my way is always very, very messy because mostly I'm concerned about the flight performance, not the look of my quadcopter. So how are you going to do it? I really leave it up to you how you will make it beautiful, how you will tuck everything in. But one thing for sure, when installing the ESCs here, okay, or you can also install the ESCs at the bottom, Okay, find a place to install the ESCs at the bottom. As I mentioned, this all depends how you install them. But how you install them, how, where you put the ESCs, remember one thing. Leave enough slack of cables so that the arms can tilt forward and backward. So for forward arms, tilt them all the way forward. Put the ESCs on, use the zip ties or whatever methods you want or wherever you want to put the ESC. Make sure your cable has enough slack for the arm to tilt forward. For the rear arm and rear ESCs, once again, follow the same method. Wherever you mount the ESCs, remember to tilt the arm all the way back and make sure you are leaving enough slack 
of the cable and then zip tie the cable somewhere. That means now if the arm tilt forward, the cable will have more slack on it, more cable will be left, but when the arm tilts backward, you have enough slack of cable to let the arm tilt backward. Similarly, as I mentioned, due to the forward, so all forward and backward ESCs should be installed, no matter where you install them, should be installed in a way that you have enough cable for arms to tilt forward and backward, all right? So let us go ahead and do it. After I've done doing this, uh, tucking things in, uh, we are going to move on to the next step, and that will be uh, where are you? Come here. That will be installation of the CC3D connection to your receiver and after that programming of radio and programming of quadcopter and then we will be ready to fly this quadcopter. But remember in the end we will install the propeller adapters according to clockwise and counterclockwise moves.